Data is a non-negotiable when running a business, launching a print-on-demand business, and building momentum with your print-on-demand business. Without that, you are just guessing what people want. And with our business, we are wanting to work smarter, not harder. And so today, I'm going to be walking you through a full tutorial on how to use a data tool that specifically gives you insights to everything that's happening on Etsy. I personally have done nearly a quarter of a million dollars of revenue on Etsy alone, and this tool was an absolute game changer for me to be able to spend time a couple times a week taking a look at what is performing well on Etsy, what is selling. It gives you the ability to kind of focus your attention on what is working well so you're not wasting time just kind of shooting in the dark on what people are wanting. We never want to steal what is already working in the space, but you can absolutely use tools like this to understand what's working, use that for inspiration, and ultimately make a better product and do that all from home with a business model like print on demand. And while I'm talking today about Etsy, this is not something that you only have to use if you're wanting to sell on Etsy. This data is pulled from Etsy, but people are shopping on Etsy. They're shopping across other platforms. This is absolutely applicable if you are running your own Shopify store or if you're selling in person, there are all types of businesses that get their start on Etsy before expanding into other channels. So I highly recommend uh, you watch till the end to get all of the nuggets of how you can use this tool to find different product trends, different revenue metrics, as well as different insights about which types of shops are performing well. You might not know it, but huge brands have actually started on Etsy by taking a look at Etsy data. I have an example right here. Native deodorant was actually started from somebody that noticed on Etsy that natural deodorant, non-aluminum deodorants were trending well in the search data. And that was how Native was born. They found a white label product, allowed their own branding to be added to that, and ultimately scaled that to a multi, multi-million dollar business, which is crazy. So the data is so important, and I'm excited to show you exactly how I use Everbe to get to these types of data nuggets. So as I just kind of mentioned that the tool that I'm going to be talking about today is called Everbe. This is what it looks like. If you go onto their website, you can scroll through and see kind of their messaging and also their different pricing. I would recommend signing up for free to start. Keep in mind, though, as I go through this tutorial today, I do have their growth plan. So you might kind of tap out on your usage if you don't have that paid subscription. I'll include a link to them in the description below on how you sign up for them. And if you are interested in upgrading your subscription, it's basically going to be like $19.99 per month if you get the year-long subscription. But if you only want to pay monthly, it's going to be $29.99. So keep that in mind. It's definitely something that I have found to be valuable. I started as a monthly member and then have upgraded. But keep that in mind as you go through. So after you sign up for free and you download their extension, what that will allow you to do is every time you go onto Etsy, you will have this fly out panel available for you to use with the Everbee research tool. I'm going to get into the three main reasons that I use Everbee, and that is product analytics, revenue analytics, and keyword research. So now that I have the extension installed and I'm on my Etsy, I'm going to just go over to the search bar and I'm going to type in a trend that I'm interested in looking at. I posted a video recently about a really cool Etsy design trend edit that recently featured the book lovers niche. I'll link that here. Uh, but that's one that I want to do some more research in because I think that it is a highly, highly profitable and untapped niche that has plenty of potential. So I'm going to type in book lover and what you'll automatically see here is that there are a lot of things that pop up that we wouldn't have been able to see if we didn't have the Everbee extension. So as you can see these little B icons pop up and it'll give you a different number of monthly searches that we weren't able to see if we didn't have the extension. So for example, the book lover shirt has 1900 searches and book lover gift has 6400 searches. So automatically getting more insights that this is a term that a lot of people are searching for and we might be able to dig a little bit deeper on. So I'm going to go ahead and click into the book lover gift. Once that loads, you're going to see some more information populate that we previously would have not been able to see as well. And that is going to be under each listing. You will see this bucket here that will say monthly sales, views, conversion rate, and listing age. And what that is, is going to be the actual monthly sales that this product is doing, as well as the views and the conversion rate. So how many times people are seeing this and actually purchasing it 
and the listing age. So what I'm gonna do here is click onto this little icon that says open. And what that will do is it will allow me to actually see further information about this product and the stats related to it. So already so much information that is just crazy that we have at our fingertips to give us an idea of, wow, yeah, this product is definitely worth launching or this niche is worth learning a little bit more about because we can see that a product like this is doing 58 sales in a month, which is a great, great opportunity for us to dive a little bit deeper. So when I click into it a little bit further, we can see the monthly sales and the monthly revenue, which is just kind of going to be a measure of the monthly sales times the price. We can also see the total sales that this listing has done since it was listed 13 months ago, as well as some additional pieces here. And what is awesome about this is this candle has been live for 13 months. I'm not sure if it is print on demand, but we know that there are print on demand candles out there. Shout out Lumiant. Um, so there are tons of opportunities here, but we don't really know like, okay, this has been live for 13 months. What's happened in 13 months? This year, ever be launched a new update that basically allows us to see the actual trends of how this product has trended. So when we take a look at the data here, we can actually see that this product has sold um, differing amounts over the last year. So for example, I'll take a look at the last 12 months and we'll be able to see that this product was probably listed about a year ago. It really didn't get any sales during the summer dead zone for print on demand sometimes. And then starting in the holiday season and in Q3, Q4, we saw it significantly start to do five to 10 orders every single day and has kind of fallen a little bit lower outside of Q4. This is what we would expect to see for a product like this, but actually being able to see this is a total game changer. So we know that this is a product that's probably going to start peaking in Q3. Let's get something like that live now so we have time to get reviews on it, build the SEO, all of those types of moments. So such a game changer for me in my business as I kind of want to understand when and where things are performing well. As I scroll down a little further, this is where more of that like keyword research comes into play and tag research, which is super, super valuable. So as I scroll beneath the daily charts, you'll also get to see the tags that this product is using. And not only that, but what is the competition for those types of tags? Keep in mind here that while we can see the tags and we can see the keyword score, not all of these are going to be super relevant for what we would want to add into our products. And don't simply copy these and put them into yours. Make sure that they are relevant to your product. But it still gives you some idea on where there is high competition, low competition, or high volume. And so the way that we read this is going to be taking a look at a tag. The volume is going to be the searches that this product, this tag actually sees. And then the competition is going to be how many listings have that included in its kind of SEO and tags. And that puts out a keyword score. Obviously, the higher the keyword score, typically the better it is because it's lower competition and more search volume. But this isn't always great because sometimes these are just like weird. I don't know why there are so many people searching for reading surprise. Maybe they're wanting to do a reading surprise gift or something like that and just leaving off the gift. Um, but if that is something that resonates well for your product, it's something good to know that we might be able to make more products that are related to the reading surprise gift category. So keep in mind that this is good to use directionally um, and helpful to kind of get an idea on which types of tags are driving the traffic to listings like this. You can also click over to shop details and it will give you kind of a fly out opportunity of the total sales that this shop has done, how long it's been listed, and the amount of reviews and the amount of products in this shop. So this is already super helpful for me. This is a candle shop that has done over 43,000 sales. So an insane amount of products being moved through this shop. They also have 1,900 total listings. So I talk a lot on my channel here about like, this is not really a passive income stream. It is if you have like really great sales and really great designs and the momentum keeps building, but it takes a lot of time and continuous work to get those things listed and actually seeing them sell 
and Etsy learning that you can make products that are selling for their platform. So keep that in mind. I love taking a look at this as like a reality check that these are going to be potentially um, great products to sell, but there's going to be work involved. From there, I can just kind of start scrolling through the For You page and start to see other things that inspire me with print on demand. Here's one that I absolutely love. It's a Sorry I'm Booked crew neck. Looks like it could be print on demand. This looks like the Gildan 1800 crew neck. There is an embroidered bookworm that says, Sorry I'm Booked. This is something that you'd only have to pay for digitization once. When we take a look at the sales numbers here, it is doing 76 monthly sales, has only been live for five months. And when we look deeper, this is a product that's doing over $2,000 of revenue per month with a cute, kitschy, adorable little bookworm on it. These are all things that can give us really good inspiration for our own print on demand. Keep note here that this is not going to be profit. So this is monthly revenue. This is likely something that they're getting anywhere from 20 to 25% profit margin on, especially if they are actually charging uh, the $25. And so still really great opportunity to make $400 to $500 a month off of a single listing, um, but just another really great example of how to use Everbee that I do every couple of days. Once I'm ready and I feel like I have a good idea of what like individual listings are doing and my own kind of interpretation on what's trending well, the next step that I'll do is take a look at like what is the opportunity for the entire market and can I see things at a more aggregate level and make sure that I'm only looking at products that are in a specific age or volume of sales that I specifically want to look at. So the way that you do that is you hover over here to your Everbee flyout where it says product analytics. And what that will do is it will pull up a listing of all of the product analytics on this page. As you can see, it'll have, it has the 62 listings that is noted here. And what I like to do is instead of just looking at the 62 listings, I want to look at the entire Everbee database because I want to know every product that is listed that is related to the book lover gift category. And that is exactly what it will get me. So I can see now all of the revenue for all things related to uh, book lover gift and I'll customize my view a little bit further, which is really helpful if you don't need to see all of these kind of statistics. So if you go over to the customize button, you will be able to toggle on or off different features. I've toggled off shop name because I don't really care what the shop name is. Um, and there are other features that are like automatically toggled off. But let's say you do a lot of personalized items and you want to see if it is personalizable. You can toggle on certain things like that. So lots of really cool types of ways for you to format this in the way that works best for you. The other step I'll take is actually going through the filter. This is showing things that have been listed for all time on Etsy and isn't always the best understanding of what is trending right now. So there's a couple of different filters that I like to use. One that I use quite often is going to be listing age. Let's say that I only want to see what has been launched in the last year or so just to make sure that these are actually fresh and not pulling in revenue from like four years ago that could have had a crazy kind of COVID spike. So I'll come in here, listing age, and I will just type in a max of 12. Some additional things that I will do is I might just choose a minimum for monthly sales and maybe put in here like 30 minimum monthly sales just to make sure that there's enough volume of what I'm trying to look at. So once I have the data narrowed down to where I like it, I can just start doing my own analysis again, but on a high level view on which products are doing the most revenue. So I always sort mine by monthly revenue just to get an idea on the earning potential for this category. So there are certain products in here, may not be print on demand, but certain products that are doing $80,000 per month in revenue. So anytime that there is that much going into this category or any category, it's automatically something that I have interest in and I want to continue to do more information um, surrounding that. Uh, it looks like a lot of these personalized book embossers are doing super well, um, but we can see that there are a tons of different like blankets and journals and shirts that are relating to different book series is out there. So plenty of kind of opportunities for me to take that as inspiration and weave that into my own print on demand job. The last thing that I'll do within Everbee today is going to be their tag analytics as well. So I'm currently toggled over to product 
analytics. And if I go over to tag analytics, that will actually just give me some more of the keyword research, but at an aggregate level. So what this basically shows me is I've searched book lover gift. This will again show me that breakdown of volume competition and then a keyword score that is a relative uh, score relating to those. So I can get an idea on which keywords maybe have the highest opportunity to do well because there's not as much competition. What I will like to do is I will search for competition uh, from lowest to highest to get an idea on on which terms have the lowest amount of listings competing for them and see if there's any in there that might spark a niche or a even smaller segment that we can make products for. Sometimes you'll see like really good competition scores for things that are misspelled or maybe even things that are trademarked. So just keep an eye out for that. There are still ways that we can use this data and be smart and compliant about that. I am a book lover myself. And so as I scroll through some of these, I know that these are titles of common uh, book series. So while we never want to take that and use that for that likeness for our own profit, there might be themes here that we can take and use for our own profit. So for example, things like Air of Fire. Uh, I saw a wing leader shirt in here. These are all relating to that romanticy category of book. And so that is a space where we can say like, okay, these are terms that are working well and not super competitive right now. How can we build more listings around that, that there are still good amounts of volume being searched for them, but not quite as much penetration quite yet. And so this is another space I, I typically like to look at when I'm doing my own Everbee research. Hopefully that was helpful. That is how I use Everbee every couple of days to go through and take a look at different categories that I'm interested in to do my own product research, my own revenue analytics, as well as keyword research to make my shop more successful. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe for more content like this.